I feel insecurity, you know? Sure. He's, he's worried. Everything he's built himself up to, you know, you, you go out there and get beat up twice by me, you get stopped again. I mean, it's not good. It's not good for business. I'm sure he's working hard as he's ever worked, focused. You know, he wants that back. That's what makes him so dangerous. Come get it. All right, I'm here with Dustin the Diamond Poirier ahead of a massive, massive fight. Dustin, how are you feeling, my friend? Feeling good, man. Good to be back in Las Vegas. Good to see things opening back up, ready to go. Yeah, well, obviously a different atmosphere this time. Last time was on Fight Island. Uh, and very different scenario. Obviously, no fans in the building, all the rest of it. How is this different from last time, from your perspective? Obviously, the travel, you know, in the quarantine process. Last time we had to go to Vegas, so I flew from Ve uh, Florida to Vegas, had the quarantine two days there. Then across, you know, a long flight, and then was in the hotel for 12 days, I believe, before the fight. So it's a little bit smoother going here. And, uh, yeah. Well, last time when we saw Conor, he was very cordial, very polite. He was there with his family and all the rest of it. He was a gentleman. And even after the fight, you guys, there was a lot of respect there. It was nice to see. But what are you expecting this week? Because it seems already like the gloves are off and it's no more Mr. Nice Guy. But what are you expecting? That. I expect him to be crazy. You know, try to, try to get me riled up. Get me out of my, you know, my mindset. Yeah. But, dude, it's Did impregnable. Yeah. It's, I'm, I'm solid as a rock, man. Do you, do you think that will work for him, though? Because the narrative is, in, in the first fight, uh, 2014, that he got in your head and you were angry. Yeah, And then I you was. went forward. Very. You were. You were, exactly. And last time, you weren't, and you had a great performance. Do you think this time there's any possibility that he might throw you off your game? I don't think. I mean, obviously, I'm going to say I don't think so. And I feel like it's not at all. But, I mean, I guess we won't know until the bell rings. Yep. But uh, even all this, all the stuff he's doing and saying, you know, I don't, I don't hate the guy. I don't, sure. you know, I don't hate anyone anymore. I'm just at a good spot mentally, not yeah. only with fighting, but just every day, man. Yeah. It's fighting. And honestly, the stuff he's doing, it might be more for him than it is for me. Maybe he needs that. He needs to feel that he's the, he's that guy, you know, but. Do you think he's trying to summon up that, uh, that angry, that old hungry sure. type of con? He's trying to prove to himself that he's still got it. Yeah, I think so. It's just, it's. Like I said, it, talking to Brett, it just, I, I feel insecurity, you know? Sure. He's, he's worried. The pressure's on him. This is just another fight for me. Of course, it's a big one. But him, everything he's built himself up to, you know, you, you go out there and get beat up twice by me, you get stopped again. I mean, it's not good. It's not good for business. No, it isn't. Um, before we move on to the actual fight, yesterday, kind of a sensitive one. He put a, a picture out there of a DM from your wife or something. Yeah, yeah. I mean, how does that affect you? I mean, that, some may consider that a low blow. What do you say to that? You know, there's a... Uh, I mean, I've got to be honest, it was good. It was, if he was trying it, to it piss was, you off and get in your head, if it, was it was a real, good move. If it was real and my wife was messaging him or something like that, then it's a good one. But if it's fabricated or, you know, me and my wife were laughing about it yesterday yeah. when I was at the grocery store. But uh, it's just, there's no holds barred in the, in the yeah, talking, yeah, you know, yeah. so. That's the way it goes. Uh, let's go back to that last fight then. Obviously, great performance from you. you got the knockout in the second round. First round, though, what did you think of Conor there? Because a lot of people saying he has to make a lot of adjustments, but I still thought he looked good in that first round, and it's kind of disrespectful to you to make excuses for him almost. Yeah, you know, I've seen over the past six months a lot of stuff. Him, he was preparing for boxing. He was more in a boxing stance. He was, just a lot of stuff, and that's just what people do. You know, what's his excuse going to be this time? What's, what's the fans? Or maybe he didn't even have an excuse. I don't know. Maybe the, his fan base or his coaches or whatever. What's it going to be this time when I touch him up, you know? Yeah. Uh, but he felt dangerous. You know, I, I have a healthy, I don't want to call it fear, but a healthy understanding of, of his ability. He's a special athlete, special fighter. His timing, his power. You know, yeah. that's how he got to where he's at. And it wasn't by mistake. He's a special individual. Mm. But, uh, you know, I've been battling lions forever. And it's just what I do. I'm, I'm you know... Yeah, it, 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 he, he's a special guy and he felt strong, felt good uh, in the first round. At 145, he did take you out of there in the first round. Do you think now at 155 you can take shots better because you're not doing that massive wake up? I would like to think so, you okay. know, but I, I'm not sure. Um, I do feel good. I feel more durable. But a lot of things come into play when you're talking about a shot to put somebody down. Body positioning, balance, yep. you know, a, a, a lot of things. He, obviously, he has punching power and good timing. Um, and uh, the shot was about, kind of behind the ear, kind of, you know, threw, my, threw me off. It was a cheeky shot. There you there go. There you go. <laughs> it was a cheeky shot. That's for the English guys. Um, what do you think he needs to do differently? If you look at that fight, what do you think he's going to assess from that, and what do you think he's going to do differently this time? Um, I think he needs to pressure early and not, not get into a rhythm of back and forth with me. Because the longer that goes, the more I'm going to find his, his rhythm and his timing and make him miss and start, 
hitting him with shots and, and pointing at him and getting into the, the longer the fight goes, the more I start grooving. And, and, and that's just how, how I always am uh, in the gym, in fights. Yep. The longer it goes, the better fighter usually wins. Anybody can win in the first couple minutes, sure. you know, but the longer the fight goes, I feel like I can, I can outfight him. I think the popular narrative is in the first round, he's very, very dangerous. You get him out of round two and it's kind of the, the balance tips in your favor. Do you agree with that? I think the longer the fight goes and unfolds, I start pulling ahead if it's a close fight, yeah. but don't get it twisted, you know. This left hand, this right hook, I can put him out in the first as well. Oh yeah, absolutely. Well, we saw that last time. A lot was made about the calf kicks. Um, I'm assuming you're gonna bring those back to the table. I'm assuming you're gonna mix in takedowns here and there. But what do you think he's gonna do differently? I think, so for me, whenever I first got my leg, you know, I, I knew about calf kicks, but didn't really pay him a whole lot of respect until I got destroyed by him. Yeah, yeah. And Who was I, that? Who destroyed Jim Miller, the calf? Jim Miller. Another southpaw, yeah. So. Okay. He, he, I mean, he tore my leg up. I thought my leg was broken. I was at the hospital. They were giving me morphine. I was in so much pain. So wow. I know what it does. You know, I know how debilitating it is. And since getting it done to me, I had a new respect for it. And I wanted to add it to my arsenal and start damaging guys. So maybe that's what he's going to do. You know, yeah. he knows how, how effective it is. So he might implement it, you know, fighting another southpaw and, and try to land it himself. Fortunately, calf kicks came around after my time. I've never thrown one and I've never felt one. Oh, a lot of people saying he was kind of distracted. He was going to fight Manny Pacquiao. He, he was thinking about a boxing career. Do you think that's fair? Nah, because it throws shade on, on the, the work that I've done my whole life to get to that night in Abu Dhabi and put him, put him out, you know? Yeah, I, yeah. I, don't, I don't care. You know, he lost. It's a fight. Whatever. What is your prediction for this fight? I think I'm going to finish him again. I'm not sure if I'm going to knock him out. Um, it could be a stoppage by, by strikes. We'll see. Uh, for some reason, I really have a feeling I'm going to submit him. I really yeah. do. Well, he said, I forget what the exact wording was, but it's the first one to shoot is a little bit something or whatever. Do you think he's like, scared or not scared, pardon me, a little thrown off about the takedowns? Because obviously you have those in your arsenal. I'm assuming you're going to use them. It's a mixed martial arts fight. Yeah, like it, for game planning, I've never game planned in my life. The game yeah. plan is just to fight. I, I can do it all. Even with the calf kick, that wasn't like a main focus. We drill it always in camp. Yeah. But when something, it's like if I, if I would go out there and throw a cross and it was landing, I would throw more crosses because they're landing. The calf kick was landing, so I, I, I went to it. So in this fight, whatever's open, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna to use it. And yeah, I'm a mixed martial artist. If, if a shot's there, um, it, whatever, wherever I can, I can do to win, you know, by any means, that's what I'm doing. A lot of people say that maybe, you know, obviously he's very wealthy now. He's made a ton of money. And maybe the hunger isn't there as much or the fire isn't there. What do you think of that? Yeah, you know, I was doing an interview yesterday and they asked me, I think it was Hagler who said it's hard to get up and run the miles. When you, you know, you know the fact yep, quote, yep. but... Uh, to me, still fighting and still taking chances to go out there and get uh, embarrassed in front of the world at, a, at where he's at financially and business-wise, he doesn't have to work a day in his life. Sure. You know? He's set. His, his kids' kids are probably set. I'm, they are. Mm. Um, that, make, that makes him more dangerous to me because he's doing this because he wants to, not because he has to. Yeah. You know? yeah. um, he's going out there with something to prove. Well, there's a lot of things you can buy. You can't buy the championship of the world. You can't buy this either. You can't buy heart either. You know, but obviously the last fight you were going in there, the last time you shared an two, But he has two belts at home, two different weight classes. He's he done does. it all. So for him to, to lace the gloves up and get back in there in front of the world, that's a dangerous man. Oh, yeah, and you have to respect that because, as you say, his legacy is set in stone. He was a two-weight division champion. Yeah. But in that first, sorry, the second fight, you went in there. The last time you shared an octagon, you knew that he knocked you out. And I've been there myself. Like When I fought the rematch with Dan Henderson, I was all cocky. You know, but then right before I had to go out, the nerves kind of stuck in. So, so it hit me, you mm. know, and I'm like, wow, the last time I stepped in there, I got knocked out and the whole world laughed. Now it's the flip side. Now it's Connor thinking that. And I got to say, I respect what he's done. You know, taking you on again so quickly, you know, no warm up fight, no tune up. You know, you, you got to admire that. But what do you think his mental state is going to be on Saturday night? I'm not sure. Mine going into the second fight wasn't revenge. It was uh, growth. It yeah. was putting myself where, I, where I, my family needs to be. It wasn't about revenge or getting even with him. I, I don't know his mindset. This seems to me like he's, it's revenge, you know? Yeah, um, yeah. That can help you or hurt you depending on your mindset. You know, everybody's different, but. Obviously, we got a press conference tomorrow. Last time was very cordial, as we know. And you know, if you look back in the past with the ones with Khabib and countless others, he always entertains. He always puts on a show for the fans. and. You know, gets pretty insulting, but that's that's what people like to see. What are you expecting tomorrow? Theatrics? Yeah, for sure. Crazy guy. I, I'm not sure. We'll, just like the fight, we don't know until the bell rings. Well, when the press conference starts, we'll see what maniac shows up. I'm sure he's going to be having fun. I'll bring him another bottle of uh, hot sauce, though. Oh, nice, nice, nice. 
Um, after this fight, I'm assuming you think you're going to be victorious. Uh, I'm assuming also that a fight with Charles Oliveira will be next for you. That's the only fight, you know. With the, if I get my hand raised Saturday, that's the only fight. Um, but plan A right now is Connor Saturday night. I don't like to look too far ahead, you know, because none of that even is real until Saturday sure, happens. Of course. What do you make of anybody that, uh, and even Connor threw a little dig out there on Twitter, I think, about you taking the Connor fight rather than the belt. I mean, I understand it. You know, money is why we fight. We're prize fighters. Right. But what do you say to any critics of that? Go back to work, clock in, you know, buy the pay-per-view. Yeah. <laughs> um, years ago, I saw on the countdown, you know, you started off in a boxing gym and then you started training MMA. All those years ago, did you think it would come to this? I mean, Las Vegas, I mean, this fight has taken over the entire city. It's massive. Might be one of the biggest fights they ever did. And of course, you're here, you're coming in. You knocked him out last time. I mean, this is a huge opportunity. You're going to make a ton of money. Did you ever see this in your wildest dreams? No, because I didn't, like, like, talking about back then, when I started off, I didn't, it wasn't for, you know, for the money. It was for the love of the fight. Okay. And that's the only thing that's still real to me in this game. So the only thing I still like about fighting is, is the fight. You know, I don't like this anymore, to be honest with you. But I like to fight. So, uh... See, that's really interesting. Do you think that's the difference between you two? The fact that you love to fight? And I'm sure Connor loves to fight as well. In fact, I know he loves to fight. I'm an introvert, man. I don't like all this... You know, the attention. To, to, yeah, yeah. Some people love it. It seems like yeah. he loves it. You know, I'm, I'm the opposite of that. Oh. Well, he does love it. He plays to the crowd. So you just want to get in there, get the job done, go home, be with your family. Exactly. Keep doing good work. Exactly. I'm a working man. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. But, uh, but, but I'm excited, you know, about this whole thing. Is there anything, uh, any, any new, anything new we're going to see Saturday night from you? The most well-rounded, focused. Uh, you know, I feel like I hit a stride where my mind and my... my my, my physical and my technique is, I feel like always, I've been putting in the work for so long, man. Since I was a 17-year-old kid in a boxing gym, you know, I have 40-something mixed martial arts fights. Uh, it's, it's just all coming together. I yeah. care, in a weird way, me caring less about this whole thing has let it start to blossom. And That's always the way. Isn't yeah. that weird? The, yeah. Because the more you obsess, the more you like it, the more you kind of mess with your own mind and you make yourself nervous. But the more you enjoy it and just enjoy the journey, yeah. you have better success. It's weird. For sure. And the feelings like... Just the whole process is smoother to me. It's yeah. not easier, but I'm just acquainted with the uncomfortable feelings, the anxiety, all the, sh the stuff that comes along with the lead up to a fight yeah, like this yeah, and the yeah. talk. It's just like, ah, oh, here we go. If you were to compare yourself to the last Dustin that fought Connor, are you a better version? You're about the same. Where do you think you're at? From Abu Dhabi this yeah, year? Yeah, from Abu Dhabi. I, I would hope I'm better. You know, yeah. if I'm not better than I was week by week, I'm doing myself a disservice because I'm in the gym every day working on things. You know, even if it's 0.001%, I'm, I'm, I'm a better fighter. Do you think, obviously, the last one, you knocked him out? Cole, that puts you in the advantageous spot coming into this one. You, I mean, that's a good position to be in. Or do you think that's going to make him even hungrier, more determined, more fierce, if you will? It's tough to say. I can't get in his head, you know? Yeah, I'm, yeah. Sure, I'm sure it lit a fire. I'm sure he's working hard as he's ever worked, focused. Yeah. You know, he wants that back. That's what makes him so dangerous. Mm. Come get it. All right, well, listen, I can't wait. Everyone's fired up for it. Everyone is... The whole world's going to be watching. Dustin, all the best, my friend. Good luck, buddy. Thank you.